Hey everybody, welcome back to another video here. So we're talking about the offensive coordinators now that will possibly be the next here in Washington. I know there's been a lot of different names thrown out there. Um, <clears throat> you know, we've heard about Greg Roman um, basically being let go by the, the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> Uh, that's definitely a name that is tied back to, to Ron Rivera. And uh, a lot of fans are, are basically saying no, 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 no. Because um, uh, if you look at the Baltimore Ravens offense this past year, wasn't it wasn't that good. Um, <clears throat> but he does seem to share in the philosophy with Ron Rivera. Wouldn't have this two-to-one ratio of run to pass. Um, and so... That's basically probably the that's the type of uh, offensive coordinator that Ron Rivera is looking for. Now, it's already been said that uh, Ron Rivera is going to want to look outside of the organization for the next offensive coordinator. At the same time, they will be uh, interviewing inside the organization as well. I think Zimpiz uh will be interviewing for the job. Uh, but I, I think overall, I think it is a good idea for the Washington Commanders to hire this position outside. They really need to get a younger guy who, who's got a fantastic vision of how an offense should should be ran. And, and you know, just somebody with some, with some fresh ideas. The thing is, does that mesh well with Ron Rivera being more of the old school type of coach? I don't know. You know, it reminds me of back when Joe Gibbs came back into the league in 2004. Um, you know, he wanted to bring back that similar style. You know, the run first, hand the ball off, um, you know, pass when you need to. Uh, but just ball control, keep the, the ball away from the other team sort of thing and that's similar to what Ron Rivera is doing right now <clears throat> and for the most part it kind of sort of started working but you know offense was, was kind of lackluster in a little bit I mean you know Joe Gibbs did uh, you know bring a couple of playoff uh, years to the the Washington Redskins back then uh, 2005 and 2007, <clears throat> but uh, the offense wasn't necessarily this juggernaut of an offense. Um, and as a matter of fact, he realized that his offense was a little dated for the time period, and so he brought in um, Al Saunders, I believe, uh, to try to uh, spice things up a little bit. So even even Joe Gibbs then realized you, you can't just do the the offense that he brought back from the 80s and expect to, um, you know, hit on all cylinders, which is kind of funny about that because if you look at Joe Gibbs' offense in 1991, their last best offense, I think, well, honestly, well, the Redskins' last Super Bowl season, right, it yes, we ran the ball a lot. Uh, now you know, signature Joe Gibbs running the football, the Hogs, you know, and all this stuff. But um, it was a lot of shifting of the offensive line. There was a lot of rollouts for Mark Rippon, but a lot of deep passes to the posse as well. So it was a lot of passing involved in that offense as much as it was running. And sometimes it was passing to set up the running game. <clears throat> so, you know, it wasn't necessarily that Joe Gibbs was always, you know, hand off to John Riggins and that was it. Um, but it seemed like when Gibbs came back in, in uh, the mid-2000s, he kind of reverted back to how it was in the 80s w when he had John Riggins and all of them. And, and uh, you know, for the most part, that didn't really work as well as as expected fast forward to ron rivera he seems like he's trying to institute the same thing he's also trying to institute a two-back system so you know that was something else that i kind of had 
thought about as well when I first heard about this two to one ratio with run to pass was why haven't we tried the two back thing? Um, you know what? Why haven't we done that? You know, it's either it's either you have B Rob in the back or you have Antonio Gibson in the back, but you never have them both. It's like why not? It seems like you can just open up so much with having both of those guys in the back. And, um, you know, so I do agree with Ron Rivera in the instance of, I would love to see more of that in the backfield. You know, have those guys back there. Maybe one of those guys is going to wind up being your decoy and the blocker, and the other guy is going to get the ball. But, you know, that opens up so much more. But, again, this is this is old school football, so... You know, I don't know how far that that can take you in this modern day of, of NFL. Now, on the other end, you can't be, as I alluded to in the, the last video, and you should watch the last video, but um, <clears throat> you can't be a 2 to 1 ratio on the other end. And I know a lot of, a lot of people are going to be like, this is a quarterback-driven league. Yes, it is. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a pass-happy league either. It means it's a balanced offense a balanced offense is going to take you all the way pass happy is going to make you look you know exciting it's going to be um it's going to be fun to watch because there's going to be a lot of points on on, on the the board but once the defense starts seeing that you're going to drop back to pass more times than not then they're going to drop people back in coverage you're going to start getting more coverage sacks um the quarterback's going to wind up having to hold the ball a lot longer. And, you know, if you're going against a defense that's got a stout front, that's not going to work either. And and then suddenly, if your running game is not the best, well, you're, you're, you're stuffed. So you got to have that balance. It, the, balance is everything in football. I don't care what era of football you're playing. Balance is everything. And I think the best thing to be is 50-50 down the middle. And so I think that's what Ron Rivera and company really need to look at. As an offensive coordinator, it's going to come in and say, hey, I understand you, you <coughs> excuse me, I understand you want to run first. And that's fine. We could be a run first offense, but we can also be a balanced offense as well. And... You know, we can also mix in ideas of having both Antonio Gibson and Brian Robinson on the field at the same time. That's really going to uh, confuse the defense a whole lot. We can do stuff like that. Let, let's get creative with this, but let's utilize and maximize the talent that we have. Let's get Curtis Samuel more involved. I mean... You know, it's just, it blows my mind. You know, Scott Turner, the uh, the other thing, and then we'll end this video, but the other thing that's floating around now and, and Twitter land is that um, Scott Turner wasn't the only problem. You know, so it's now it's like the same people who needed Scott Turner gone are now saying, well, Scott Turner wasn't the problem or wasn't the only problem. We're not saying he wasn't the only problem. Uh, but the problem with Scott Turner is the fact that, one example, when you have fourth and one, and it's short one, really all you need to do is two things. You either quarterback sneak it, or you hand it off to your your best back who's, who's best utilized for short yardage. That's, that's Robinson. Maybe that was Williamson, because uh, Williams... Um, Williamson, he, he seemed like Jonathan Williamson. He, he was pretty good with short yards as well, but um, definitely B-Rob was probably the best one. And then who do you bring in? Neither one of those guys. Um, you know, or if you do bring in like Jonathan Williams, you hike the ball and then you toss a deep toss to him in the backfield and expect him to run five yards just to get to the line of scrimmage to get one yard. So it, it's it's things like that that are nerve-wracking, that were head-scratchers, and really, in the end, are things that get you fired as an offensive coordinator. 
Uh, you don't overthink things like fourth and one or third and one or whatever. Um, you do, you know, the, the shortest distance is a straight line. And yes, the, the defense knows what you're going to do. But in that case, sometimes what you do is, you know, the defense is going to try to stop the run, but you know, that's the best option for you in that instance, you got to beat your man. And maybe in those times like that Scott Turner didn't realize or maybe Scott Turner didn't have faith in his offensive line and maybe that's what it was too and so maybe he called plays because he didn't think that the offensive line could beat the defensive line to pick up that one yard and so he felt like he had to be creative who knows what it was but in the end it didn't work and um you know, we complained about Scott Turner last year as well. So, and yes, we had problems on the offensive line last year too. So, yes, it wasn't all on Scott Turner, but it was best for Scott Turner to leave. I don't think anybody will argue against that. And if they, if they do, I really don't think they paid attention at all to the offense this year. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Uh, please Please like this video, share it out. Um, it helps the algorithm, it helps me out a whole lot when you like this video. Um, comment, let me know what you think. Um, who do you think the next offensive coordinator is going to be? Um, who do you think we should get? Um, and tell me your reasons why we shouldn't get uh, Greg Roman. Okay. Take care, everybody. I will see you in the next one. Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.